Hi everyone, in today's video I'm just going to show you how to use some of the free resources that are on the Brother Creative blog. So you may or may not already know about this, but I just thought I would show you because I'm going to use one of the free resources to make some tags. So, I'm on my applelover53.co.uk website here and I've put a link to the creative blog on my website under the scan and cut tab. So if you select the scan and cut tab and scroll to help and information, and then you just scroll down, you'll see where it says manuals and information. There's all sorts of information on here that you can make use of. But if you scroll down to this third section, you'll see it says here, brother creative blog, sewing slash embroidery and cutting projects. And it says here. So obviously this is an online free resource. So this is available to anybody that's got a sewing machine or an embroidery machine or any model scan and cut machine. So if you select where it says here, it will open up the creative blog in a new tab for you. And the actual blog address is sewingcraft.brother.eu. Now, if you're in any other part of the world other than the UK or Europe, I don't know whether you'll be able to access this or not, or whether you might have you know, one that's .com at the end, I'm not sure. This is the, the blog, as I say, and you can see it says Sewing Room, Embroidery, Emporium, Quilt Club, Cutting Corner, Inspiration and How To. If I just click on Sewing Room just very quickly, you'll see that there are sewing projects here. And all the things on this website, as far as I'm aware, are all free projects. If you've got a machine that does embroidery, you know, there are some great free resources here as well. But for today, I'm just going to go to the cutting corner because I want to make use of something that's on here to make some quick tags. If you hear any noise in the background, I've got Eddie in the office with me and he's grumping at all the noises he hears going up our lane. OK, um, so that's just a bit of a warning for you. If he does bark or anything, I'll try and edit it out. But sometimes it's just not possible to do so. So I'm going to scroll down. And this is the one I want to use here, festive gift tags. And you can see that Brother have put some tags in. So scan and cut paper craft, festive Christmas beginner. I'm going to left click on the photograph of those tags and it's going to open a bigger image of their project and when you scroll down it tells you who it's been posted by and it says festive gift tags it was posted in November 2022 and it says it's a two minute read and it says make gift giving even more special with these scan and cut gift tags you can make them from paper or stickers and then it kind of tells you you know some brief product that you'll need so maybe some light or um, or medium weight cardstock or printable sh sticker sheets or both whatever so I'm not going to be making it these into stickers although you could print these on sticker sheet and make them stickers and you don't need the sticker kit or anything that brother do sell for the scan and cut for these these are just jpeg images that they've provided free for you to print on your printer and because they're saying you can use them with the scan and cut machine I'm assuming they've all got an outline that if you did print these and then you loaded your printable onto your mat and did scan to direct cut that all these outlines should be found that's what I'm thinking because obviously they're providing them for you to use. I'm not going to cut the individual outlined images. I'm going to show you how I'm going to create tags with these uh, today. So, it, as I say, it shows you briefly what's in these images. But if you click here where it says download printable images, it's now going to drop that folder with all these festive images down onto my computer and I use a Mac and it, it's going to drop into my downloads folder so that's how I know where to find it and my downloads folder you can't actually see it but it runs the, along the bottom of my screen in my taskbar if you use Windows or another system they will probably drop into your downloads folder on your computer you'll just need to know where to locate them so I'm just going to close that tab down now because I don't need it 
and then I'm going to go to my downloads folder and here's the folder it says Xmas images so I'm going to select it and just drag it out onto my desktop which again if I, you might not be able to see it but it's here okay because I'm screen recording and I've only got a proportion of my screen chosen so I'm going to double click that folder and it's now going to open up and you can now see all those images as bigger thumbnails and they're all JPEG images as I say I've not looked at them all only looked at the Santa because that's the one I want to use but I am assuming that they've all got an outline that your scan and cut will pick up if you want to do scan to direct cut so there are the images and as I say it's the Santa that I'm going to use so what I'm going to do now I'm going to open up my word processing package that I have on my Mac and that's called pages which is like the equivalent of word if you use windows or you might have something else so I'm just going to open up pages I'm going to choose a new blank document there's some really cute images in in this free folder I'm going to choose blank it's come up because it comes up with the most recent use and here's my blank page I'm going to set my view down to 100% in the hope that you know you can see the whole A4 page now I'm going to drag the Santa from the Xmas images folder on my desktop and I'm going to drop it into this document and I'm only going to use that image if you were wanting to use others you'd just drag and drop them you know but I'm just going to use that one so I'm just going to select it and bring it down. So I want to make this image smaller because it actually looks, you know, you can see this is an A4 page. So you can see that this image takes up, you know, quite a big size. So I want to make it smaller. And if I left click over the bottom boxes and start to drag in, you'll see the size appear on my screen. Now, again, if you use anything other than pages, you will have something, no doubt, that shows you how to resize somewhere on your screen. I want to take this down to about three inches high. So I'm just going to keep dragging it in until I get to about three inches. And now I want to add some text underneath. So I'm going to come to the top of the page and choose text. And that's going to drop a text box on my screen. I'm going to highlight where it says type to enter text. And I'm going to over type that with happy Christmas. Then I'm going to do carriage return from Ashley. Again, I'm going to left click and highlight all the text. I'm going to come up to the top where it says text. I'm going to center it. And where it says the font here, Helvetica, I'm going to click on the downward facing arrow and I'm going to scroll down and find a font that I have on my computer called Watermelon. Then I'm just going to left click anywhere on the page to deselect and then left click back on the words. And I'm going to make this box smaller so it kind of just hugs my words. Now I may have to resize it again in a minute but I'm just going to leave it like that for now. With my text selected and it's in black by default, again I'm still under the text tab. You can see here where it says text colour and it shows black. I'm going to hit the little colour wheel so I'm going to left click on the colour wheel and it brings up my colour selection and this is how it opens on a Mac. Again if you use Windows you'll probably have some way of doing this it just might not be you know it might not show up exactly the same as it does here Your, yours might be up along the top it's a very 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 long time since I've used Windows so I honestly can't remember but now my colour text box is open if you like you can see at the bottom there's a little magnifying dropper I'm going to select that and then I'm going to drag the dropper using my mouse over the Santa and like I could pick up like the purple of his sack but I want the red of his body so I'm going to kind of drag that dropper over the red and I'm going to left click and instantly it puts that colour down here. Now I've already used this 
previously and that's why you can see the color down here but if you want to save this so that you can then use it in any future project not just this one you know if you want to save that color and use it in a completely different document or anything else the way to do it is to left click drag it and drop it into one of your empty boxes and then it becomes available within your color wheel selection for future projects so I'm going to close that down now because it's changed the colour of the text. I'm going to drag this over and I'm going to put it underneath my Santa and kind of centralise my words to the image. So I might just bring it over a little bit more. So I've got my Santa that I made around about three inches high and then I've got Happy Christmas from Ashley. So now I'm just going to left click anywhere on the page I'm going to select, now sometimes it lets me do this and sometimes it doesn't, it puts like a blue box around it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to left click on the Santa because I want the bounding boxes. I'm going to hold my shift key or my command key down and select the words again as well. And then I've got both selected. So now I need to find where I can group them. So it's under a range on a Mac. So I select a range and you can see there then it says group. Okay. You can also see now that the total height of my words and my Santa are three and a half inches high by just over two inches wide. So I'm actually going to ungroup it for a minute because I want to bring the text over a bit more so it's a bit more centralised. So again, I'm just going to select the Santa, hold my shift key down, select my words and group because I'm kind of happy with how those words are situated now to my image. And I want to make a tag that's around about three and a half inches tall. So with this all grouped together now, I'm going to drag in on the left hand corner and you can see the height's going to change and the width here because I've got constrained proportions. So that's like we do on the scan and cut machine where we move everything in proportion. I could unlock it if I want to, but I don't want to distort my image. So I'm just going to drag this in and I'm just going to make it about, we'll do 3.12 high and it says it's about 1.72 wide. So I'm just going to make a note of those measurements because I'm going to make a tag in Canvas Workspace. So while I've got that selected, I'm going to right click and hit duplicate and I'm going to bring another one along and then I'm going to do duplicate again and right click and duplicate again so I've got four on my page and this spaced out I mean I could probably get more I could probably get another one here to the right and another one here and then if I select one and rotate it I could probably get one down here but like I say I want to uh, print these through my printer and then add a tag shape around them so I'm just going to make sure that they're you know, they've got space in between them and space above them. So now I can go up to the top where it says untitled. I can give this a name. So I'm going to call it Brother Tags. And I'm just going to pop it onto my desktop. And then I'm going to go up to the top of the page and choose File and Print. And it brings up my... HP printer by default. I've got colour selected. I only want one copy of it and I'm going to hit print. So that's now going to send this to my printer that's in my craft room. Okay, so I'm going to cancel that and close that down because I've kept a copy on my desktop anyway in case I want to print more. So now, being as though I'm already on the internet, I'm just going to go to Canvas Workspace and I'm going to open a new blank page in Canvas Workspace. So I'm going to log in and open a blank page. So now I'm in Canvas Workspace Online. You could do this in the computer version. It's entirely up to you. So if I come over to the basic shapes and I look at all the shapes that are in the basic shapes, there's not what I would call a traditional tag shape. So you know the kind of rectangular shape that's got the angled edges and a flat top. And that's what I want to use. But what there is... There's a shape here, if I select it, that's the kind of 
style I'm looking for. And then there's a square. When you bring anything into Canvas Workspace, they automatically come in at 3.94 inches wide. So this is a square, so it's the same in width and height. And if I choose this bit, you'll see on the screen here, it's 3.94 wide by just under an inch high. So that's the default size. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna over bring the square up so it overlaps the top of this. I'm going to select them both, get to edit, line them up on the left hand side so I know that they line up together because they're the same width. And if I've got them overlapped enough with them both selected and I go to edit and weld, it will give me my tag shape and that's the shape I'm looking for. So now I'm just going to choose a square again and then just using the bounding box circles, I'm going to drag this square in so that it's 1.72 inches wide because that was the width of my image if you remember in pages. So this is just going to be a visual aid. So 1.72 inches wide and it was 3.12 inches high. So I'm going to just tap the bottom up until I get to 3.12. So this rectangle, if you like, represents the size of my printed Santa and words. And I want to put this so that I've got this tag shape I can cut around it. So now I'm just going to drag the tag shape in and make it smaller until this printable image sits on it comfortably. So I'm going to make the height a little bit longer and then I'm going to drag it in a little bit. So if you imagine this is my printed image, let's just make this red for now. So this is my printable Santa and my Christmas words. And if I put that down on this tag, you'll see that the tag shape is going to cut out comfortably with that printable printable image on it and the total height of the tag is going to cut out at 3.79 by just over two and a half wide and I think that's that's fine that'll be enough so I can get rid of the red box because that was only a visual aid for me to make the tag I'm not going to add a hole in the top because I've not actually decided how I'm going to use these tags yet so I may just end up punching a hole with a cropper dial but basically that's my tag shape that I'm going to put around my printed page so again I'm going to right click and hit duplicate and I'm just going to duplicate it so I've got four okay on my page because my printable image has got four images so I'm just going to use four tags so now in canvas workspace I can save this as brother tags and hit the save icon then I can hit download I'm going to send mine over wirelessly so I'm going to use scan and cut transfer that sent that over to the scan and cut machine so I can now close all this down and I can go into my craft room retrieve my printable and show you what I'm going to do with it next okay so this is my printout that I sent over from my computer I've used my Stampin' Up! Basic White Thick cardstock to print these on and this goes through my HP DeskJet printer, no problem. So I've stuck them onto my regular mat. I'm going to take this over to the Scan and Cut machine now. So I'm going to, I've already got my Scan and Cut machine on, I'm going to press the Load Mat button. I'm going to come to the screen, I'm going to retrieve data from Canvas because that's where I made my tags and it should bring up the four tags and here they are on screen. So now I'm going to do a background scan and start the machine.
So I can see the designs on the screen, but they're a little bit faint. So I'm just going to go into the wrench and see if I can turn the darker background on, which is the first box. I'm going to say, OK, so I can see them now. OK, so basically all I'm going to do now is drag them over my shapes and is it if i've positioned them far enough apart you know horizontally and vertically these tag shapes should now fit over them comfortably i'm going to go into edit and i'm going to go into the magnifying glass and i'm going to go up to 400 percent and then what i'm going to do i'm just going to use this down arrow to scroll down and I can see where my tag is. So if I select it, I'm just going to move it over to the left a little bit to centralize it better. So that one looks okay. So now I'm going to scroll down again to the one underneath it and do the same. Just see how it's looking. Does it look centralized? Gone a little bit too far there. That one looks okay. So I'm going to use this arrow now at the bottom of the screen and go to the other two and see how that, that look looks pr pretty centralised to me. And I'm going to go up and just make sure the other one looks okay. And it does. So those four shapes I made in Canvas Workspace look okay. They look as though they're positioned okay over my scanned printed images so now i'm going to say okay 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 select and cut and it should now cut the four tag shapes for me now i was cutting vinyl and i've not changed my setting back so i need to go into the wrench icon and i need to scroll down a page and turn half cut off and say okay so now it says half cuts off, I can press start. Because when you're cutting vinyl, you don't want to cut right through the vinyl, so you use the half cut setting. But it, I've got a playlist all about vinyl on my YouTube channel, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go and have a look there. So this now says it's going to take about a minute. It, it, it will be less than that. And it's just going to cut the tag shapes around my four printed designs that I got from the Brother Creative blog. So I've been able to make four quick tags. I probably could have put these closer together and got six on, but I only actually need four. So I just thought I'd space them out just to be on the safe side. So now I'm going to the screen. The screen says it's finished cutting. I'm gonna say okay and unload my mat. So I'm just going to lift the mat to get a corner and peel the waste away. And now you can see I've got four lovely printed personalised tags, all made from a free resource on the Brother Creative blog. And I was able to personalise them. I've put Happy Christmas from Ashley using a font that I've got on my computer that I was able to use in Canvas Workspace. I can put these together now and punch a hole in the top or whatever I want to do with them. I've not decided what I'm going to... I know what gifts they're going on, but I've just not decided how I'm going to package them yet. So I'm not going to punch any holes in these at the moment. If I have worked out what I'm going to be doing by the time I finish doing this filming I'll show you the finished packaging but um, you, you may not see it it may just be that this is what you're going to see for now so I hope you like that video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video thank you